likely to, to know, it's um, Remembrance Sunday. Um, it is the day set aside in the UK to commemorate the end of the First World War. Um, but of course, it's also used in remembering the end of the Second World War and all other conflicts that happened subsequently. Um, <clears throat> Two minutes silence is going to be observed all over the UK today um, at 11 o'clock and we want to be part of that as good citizens. Um, this two minutes is observed at 11, as I said, to mark the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month when the First World War ended in 1918. Um, but in us observing the silence, sorry, I'm just watching my time to be sure that we don't miss the, the exact uh, minute. So in observing that, because we are Christians, we are going to pray, but not for the dead. We will pray for the living, um, the living families of those soldiers that died in the various conflicts, and you know that some of those soldiers are still alive today, so we want to also pray for them. Some of them suffered life-changing um, injuries. We want to pray that God will continue to keep them, and we want to pray for their families as well. And also, we want to appreciate God for the peace that is reigning, not only in our country, but in the world now, and we just want God to please sustain that peace for us. So shall we stand up please? Um, when it is um, two minutes after 11, we will let you know as the um, pianist will strike. But in the time being, we just want to bow our heads in silence. And while we do that, as I said, we want to pray for those that we have mentioned. Shall we do that now, please? In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Shall we be seated?
want to thank God for that beautiful duet and all the preludes that the choir has given us. Um, may the Lord prepare us to walk on that beautiful street that is paved with gold. That is in the kingdom of God. We want to appreciate God for being in our midst once more. God got here before um, we ever contemplated coming here. And he's always here to bless us. So we know that he's here again to bless us today. We want to also recognize the presence of those that might be coming for the first time today or that those that are not our regular members, um, they come to worship with us from time to time. And we welcome our internet audience as well. We pray that as God is blessing us here, he will bless you wherever you are located. Um, apart from our observing the two-minute silence that we had just before our service commenced, we um, heard that beautiful song from our choir, God of Our Fathers, and then that duet by Sister Emma and Sister Faith. Well, it's our turn now to sing to the Lord, and let us sing joyfully. Our first song will be from CGS number 14, and Brother Yoajibola is leading us. God bless you. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumph of His grace. ever fill our mouth. Amen. Uh, we sing again number 488. The same in book 4 and 88. Christian, seek not yet repose. Hear thy guardian angels say, thou art in the midst of foes. Watch and pray. We sing verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. Verses 1, 2, 5, and 6.
missing again, 523, 523. Storms do not alarm me. Amen. They sometimes must cease. Yes. Trials cannot harm me, for I have blessed peace. Amen. I, all I've left behind me, I long for no more. Better things shall find me on Cana's land. Amen. We sing all the verses after the tune. <laughs> be our Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing the last song, 494, 494. Oh, my comrade, yeah. see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcement now appearing, victory is nigh. Amen. I say, victory is now. Amen. Oh, the fourth, for I am coming. Jesus signal seals, will be answered back to heaven by, his, by thy grace, we will. Amen. We sing the last verse standing, while we shall remain standing to be led in prayer.
must wave the answer. By the grace, we will. We will, oh Lord. We are not going to give up. We are not going to shake it out. We will fight the battles to the nail. Because our great commander, Jesus Christ, is going before us. We will not fear the battle. We will not fear, oh Lord. Help us today. Help us today to hold the fort. He said, who oh, lays his hand up on the plow and looks back? It's not fit for heaven. We don't want to look back because we've got a great commander. Because we've got Jesus Christ who paid it on Calvary. And Calvary covers it all. Calvary covers it all. Is it the salvation of our soul? Calvary covers it all. Is it the sickness of our body? He paid the price. Oh, he has bought us. We are his own. We cannot pay that price. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. This morning, come down. Revive our soul. Revive our soul. Because we have an high priest down uh, here, up in heaven that is pleading our cause, interceding for us, interceding for all the... Even, he say, even if we have done anything wrong, he's going to intercede for us. He's going to plead our cause. That after all said and done, one of these days... He said, Job said, with our eyes, we will see our Savior. We will see our Savior who paid that price for us. Lord, as many as are stepping to this sanctuary, list our name in that book of life. We will make it in Jesus' name. As we, our house, our children, our loved ones, our leaders, our co, co Lord, make us worthy. Count us ready. Lord, we want to examine ourselves and pray to you that, Lord, make us ready. Amen. Count us to be the church among the firstborn church Amen. that will make rapture. Amen. It can happen anytime. Amen. Lord, help us. Amen. Those who are sick, looking unto thee, having faith in thee, Lord, heal them, O Lord. Amen. Heal that young man. Amen. Heal Sammy for us, O Lord. Amen. Complete the speed up the healing. Amen. You can do it. Amen. You can do it. Amen. You will do it. Amen. We are looking unto thee. And the, the, the brother too that has made a request. Lord, speed the healing, O Lord. Amen. Speed the healing, O Lord. Amen. And as many as are looking unto thee, Lord, heal them. Amen. Our leader is somewhere in Europe. Lord, go with them. Amen. Bring them back safely. Amen. Lord, be with our preacher, uh, preacher this morning. Amen. Speak to us, O Lord. Amen. Speak to us, O Lord. Amen. Give us the enabling grace Amen. to be doers. Amen. We don't want to be hearers only. Amen. We don't want to be coming only to tick the box. But we want to have the mindset that we have a, 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 a great commander that when we look unto him, he will always answer our prayer. We are not serving Baal or Asherah. We are serving the living God. We don't want to err, oh Lord. We don't want to disobey in any, in any aspect of our life. Bless us mightily. Bless us, oh Lord. That by the time we shall leave this sanctuary today, we shall go home rejoicing that you have done it for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We now listen to the first special, which is um, Serving Him Truly. That's going to be a solo. And then we'll have the Bible reading to be brought by Brother Emmanuel Dosen from Psalm 20, verse 1 to verse 9. And then the last special, it is finished before we have the word of exhortation. God bless you all.
arise. I'm trusting in Jesus, his love never dies. I love him far better than in days of your ourselves be more truly than ever before. I do I see this me won't save the cause I'll be a true soldier I'll die out my Scripture reading is taken from Psalm 20. You shall read from 1 to 9. Psalm 20. 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Amen. The name of God of Jacob defend thee. Amen. Send thee help from the, from the sanctuary. Amen. And strengthen thee out of Zion. Amen. Remember all thy offerings. Amen. And accept thy bond sacrifice. Amen. Grant thee according to thy own heart. Amen. And fulfill all thy counsel. Amen. We will rejoice in thy salvation. Amen. And in the name of our God. We will set up our banners. Amen. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Amen. Now know I that the Lord serveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven. Amen. With the saving strength of his right hand. Amen. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen Amen. and stand upright. Amen. Save, Lord, Amen. let the king hear us when we call. Amen.
Virgin, not of praise, not of war, had come home. They were battles filled of my own making. I didn't know that I was. The king of all ages had fought all the battle for me. And victory was mine for the claiming. And now, praise his name, I am. from 1 Samuel chapter 17, um, verse 47. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 47. And all this assembly shall know Amen. that the Lord Amen. saveth not with sword and spear, Amen. for the battle is the Lord's. Yes. And he will give you into our hands. Amen. This morning, the Lord will have us consider winning the battle. Amen. You know, life is full of battles. Yes. And it's not just for sinners. It's for both saints and sinners. We all have one battle or the other to um, battle from time to time. If anyone has ever given you an impression that the moment you become a Christian, the battles of life are over, he hasn't really told you the exact truth of the Bible. I think it was um, one of us that was leading, I think it was prayer meeting on, um, during men's monthly prayer meeting here this month, and he said something about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, it is a transparent gospel. Amen. And you know, when he said that thing, it just clicked in my mind that, you know what, that is a sermon on its own, that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is transparent. Yes. Um, Jesus will not call you to himself only for you to find out what will happen later. He will let you know. That's why he said, count the cost. And in John chapter 16, verses 32 and 33, 
This is coming from Jesus Christ himself. He said, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we can see that even Jesus Christ, our captain, our Lord, who is God in man, had battles to fight. But you see, he fought those battles and he won them. And because Jesus won, we shall also win. It is Remembrance Day that we are commemorating today, and we all know the essence of the Remembrance Day. But I want to tell you that even since the end of the Second World War, wars have still continued in the world. Even as we speak this morning, battles are raging from different parts of the world. We pray that the peace of God will reign supreme, not only in our homes, in our country, but indeed in the world entirely. But you know, that lasting peace that we're looking forward to is not going to happen until Jesus Christ comes to establish his reign here on earth. There will always be battles to fight. But as Christians, we can be sure that because we have a captain that has been tried and tested, uh, the Bible says that we don't have a high priest that does not feel the way we feel, but we have a high priest who feels the way we feel because the various things that we are going through, he has also gone through them. And because he has gone through them and is victorious, he is able to give us victory. Amen. Um, I, I have um, a way of reading the Bible from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22. I don't necessarily finish it in a year. I just take my time and just read from time to time. And the current book I'm reading is the book of Jeremiah. When you read the book of Jeremiah, you will wonder where God was when Jeremiah went through all the problems that he went through. You know, there was a time that Jeremiah was literally begging for his life. Um, he was in the king's palace to deliver the word of God as usual. And then some of the king's lieutenants came and said, this man deserves to die. And the king said, it's in your hand. I can't stop you from doing what you want to do. And they took Jeremiah and they went to drop him in the dungeon. And the Bible tells us that deep down in that dungeon, there was mire. That is clay but there was no water for him to drink. Um, the essence of them putting him in that mire was for him to starve and die there. And um, somebody, a stranger in Israel, the Bible called him an Ethiopian, went to the king to plead for the life of Jeremiah and said, let's give him something to eat. There is even no enough food in the country. And the king allowed him that he could go and rescue Jeremiah the man got some men together with him. They went, they threw some, the Bible called it rags. You know, they used it to make ropes and threw it down to Jeremiah, the prophet of God. And then, <clears throat> they managed to rescue Jeremiah and bring him up. And they took Jeremiah before the king again. And the king said, prophesy unto me, tell me the mind of God. And Jeremiah said, if I tell you the mind of God, will you not kill me? And what was it that Jeremiah kept telling the king and the people is that this country will fall into the hand of the Chaldeans. They are, they are coming, they will take you all into slavery. But, O oh king, if you will surrender to the Chaldeans, they will not do anything to you. They will take you alive, and they will not burn this country with fire. But the people didn't want to hear that. However, Jeremiah did not cease from telling that. Here he was standing before the king, and he repeated the same story. And the king said, okay, this thing you have told me, make sure you don't tell anyone. And Jeremiah told him, please, king, 
don't send me back to that dungeon. Now you will wonder, where was God when all this was happening to Jeremiah? A man of God. That is the prophet called the weeping prophet in the Bible. Jeremiah saw what well, in today's parlance you will say he saw hell. But yet God was there. And God allowed him to go through all that. And then they kept Jeremiah in the prison. He was there. And the Chaldeans came, they invaded the land. The king thought he was smart. He escaped with some people wanting to run away. But the Chaldeans caught up with him. And then they took him, took all his children. And in his presence, they killed his children while he was looking on. And they also killed his lieutenants. And then they removed his two eyes. If he had obeyed the man of God, if he had surrendered himself unto the Chaldeans, he wouldn't have suffered all the calamities that befell him. But because he chose not to obey God, and then the people came and they found Jeremiah in the prison and they were under instruction. Don't do him any harm. Amen. And they told Jeremiah, <clears throat> you are free. You want to come with us to Babylon or you want to stay in Israel? All this land is yours. Just tell us where you want to stay. Then you will know that the God that we thought had forgotten Jeremiah was there in heaven. I'm sure that the angels of God were ministering to Jeremiah, giving him all the strength and the enabling to bear all the torture, all the problems that came his way. And if God fought for Jeremiah, you can be sure he will fight for you. In Psalm 34, verse 19, the Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him from it all. The Christian battles are centered around this triple alliance. The devil, the flesh, and the world. The battles will come in different forms and shapes. Oftentimes, they will manifest physically. We will see them. That yes, we're having some problems, we're having some troubles, but I want to tell you this morning that even though we see those problems physically, they are just manifesting in the physical. They are spiritual battles. Yes. Call them whatever names you want to call them, temptation, discouragement, loneliness, doubt, fear, anxiety, mistakes. You wonder sometimes when you make some mistakes, why did I make this mistake? And oftentimes, even sometimes we will have been warned. God will have spoken clearly enough, either from his um, people or from the Bible or from reminding us even of our own past. But we will still fall into those mistakes. Anxiety, sadness, loss of jobs, loss of loved ones, illness, finances, unruly children, marriage breakdown, opposition, criticism, and so on. So many battles that we have to fight with as Christians. There is no Christian that is immune against these problems. If they haven't come your way, expect them. They will come. They certainly will come. It is not a curse. It is not wishing you evil. It is just that, um, like we, I have heard people sing before, they say, a, um, a, I would say it this way that a Christian that does not suffer persecution, that does not suffer, uh, that does not have battles to face, who will he say he resembles? If we're truly followers of Jesus Christ, Jesus said that in this world we will have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. So Jesus has not left us in the dark. He has let us know, even beforehand, that these things will come. As I said, these spirituals. As, I mean, these battles are spiritual. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness right. in high places. They don't wish you well. They don't wish me well. 
the aim, the purpose of those spiritual wickedness in high places is to bring you and I down and to ensure that the heaven that we have made up our mind, that we will reach, that we don't get there. But because Jesus Christ is our captain, we can be assured of victory. Amen. The Lord will see us through our battles. Amen. Now, since the battles of life are inevitable, since they necessarily must come, what then do we do when they come? It was Martin Luther that said this, and it's a very famous saying that I'm sure many of us will be familiar with. He said, you cannot keep birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your head. You go out there, birds will be flying over. You can't stop them from flying. But if any of them wants to perch on your head, you can say, no, 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 you can't do that. You drive that, 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 um, that bird away. So we cannot prevent problems and battles from coming. But by the grace of God, we can fight through those battles. We don't want to be like Reuben. His father described him as an unstable person. You know when water is flowing. When water comes across any obstacle in its course, what does it do? It bends. And then when it bends, if you see, if it comes across another obstacle, it bends again. We don't want to be such Christians. We don't want to just flow with the tide. Christians are meant to flow against the tide. That means when water is flowing down that way, you are swimming upstream. You are swimming upstream, and you know that that requires extra strength. If we were to flow with the tide, then you would not need to do anything. Just rest in the water, and the, the, the tide will carry you through. But that is not the way that Jesus Christ has called us to tread. The way that Jesus has called us to tread is a hard one. Christianity is not for the feeble-minded. Christianity is not for people that will wake up on a Sunday morning and say, you know, today I don't feel like going. I just want to stay at home. Christianity is not for people that will say, is it not Bible study? It's just one hour. I haven't got the time. I'm a very busy person. I've, I've gone through work Monday to Friday. I won't be able to make Friday prayer meeting. Indeed, count me out permanently. Um, those are not people that are ready to work with the Lord. Those that are ready to work with God are people that will put their life on the line and say, if I die, I die. I will serve the Lord. Yes, I may be tired in my body. You know, the flesh will never cooperate. No, the Bible says that the flesh and the spirit, they, they, they war against each other from time to time. But what do you find people do oftentimes? They succumb to the pressure of the flesh. It is too much for me. I cannot do it. I cannot do that. The Christianity is not for the feeble-minded. It is in your weakness that God will give you strength. He says, let the weak say, I am strong. It is God that will give the strength. It is God that will give the grace. But you must make the move. There are things we need to do if we must overcome our battles since they must certainly come. Number one, don't run away from your battle. It is people that are feeble-minded that chicken away when there are battles to fight. Actually, the Bible does say in a place that if thou faint in the day of thy trouble, then thy strength is little. Your strength is small. When you are faced with the battles of life, that is not when to duck. That's not when to look for where to hide yourself. You face the battle head on. Have you heard the word, no retreat, no surrender? That rightly describes the Christian battle. Yeah, you are telling the battle, bring it on. Bring it on. I have a captain. The Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Who is the he that is in the world? It is Satan. He's the one that will be bringing on all those battles. He will be bringing them one, I mean on, one after another, one after another. But you see, because Jesus Christ has fought and conquered, we can stand upright before him and say, yes, bring it on, Satan. My captain is going on before me. Yeah. you find Christians, even when they are sick, they say, where will I find healing? It is in the house of God. I must get there. This sickness will not tie me down at home. That is what Christianity is. Where for some people, just a little notch, that's enough. 
it will knock them off. Don't run away from your battles. They will necessarily come. In James chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You don't resist the devil while lying on bed. No, you don't resist the devil when you are refusing to come to Bible study, when you are refusing to come to prayer meeting. That's not how to resist the devil. The way to resist the devil is to stand on your feet at all times and say, here I stand. Go and read the story of Martin Luther King. He faced a formidable battle. No one had fought that battle before. He had no reference that he could say, yes, this person did it, he succeeded, but that one did it and failed, yet he stood up and said, here I stand. So don't run from your battle. Don't see it as a strange thing. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, verse 16, and verse 19. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, verse 16, and verse 19. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. It is not a strange thing. Don't think it is a strange thing that is happening to you when those battles come your way. He said, yet, if any man suffers a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Your battle is not new. You are not alone. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed that you are struggling with sickness. Don't think it is a strange thing that Christians are not meant to fall sick. Chris, that is why the Bible says that I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes. Because God know, knew that sickness will come. But he has said, come unto me when you are sick. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes. But let him glorify God on this behalf. Verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. In other words, you can stand before those problems and troubles and say that, yes, even though this my body, this my temple is given unto the devil to torture, my soul will see the Lord. I will see him, not any other. I will see my Lord. And the Lord will keep you and see you through. Don't ask, why me? You know, and that is very human. When problems come our way, it, the tendency is for us to say, but why me? Okay, ask yourself, why should, he go, why should somebody else experience what you are experiencing? Is that person not a human being like you? You are asking God, why me? Why is this problem coming my way? God saw it fit that it should come your way. The Bible says he will not allow us to be tempted beyond that which we can bear. God has a reason for allowing that thing to come. Indeed, when those problems come, God, I thank you. You know, that you deem it, ne deemed it necessary for this to come my way, it means that you know that I am here. See it as an opportunity to know God more rather than uh, begin to ask the question, why is this problem coming my way? You know, sometimes um, things happen and we read about it um, or we hear in the news and it really doesn't touch us. We just feel, oh, oh. Uh, for instance, the um, problem of um, knifing on our streets in, in the UK generally. When you read these things, um, I guess these days they're no longer um, news that really matter to people. You just read it, oh, oh, say, oh my goodness, oh, they've killed someone again. And you, then, then you just move on. But when, it's get, when it gets to your turn, um, you will know how those people feel. That's when you will appreciate. So sometimes God may allow these things to come our way so that uh, all the people that we have been seeing have been suffering those things and you just say, I'm praying for you and you are not actually praying. Then you will know what it means uh, to go through those problems you, so that when you come out of yours, next time you see somebody in that situation, uh, you will not just promise, I'm praying for you. You, you will cry on your knees that God should rescue that person. So God has a purpose. He has a reason for allowing these things to come my way. When problems and battles of life come your way, that is not the time to run from God. 
That's not the time to run from the people of God. That is not the time to run from church. That is not the time to run from reading the Bible. You know, um, people do say, I have, I've, I've read this before in WhatsApp um, messages. You know, people send all kinds of things around. Um, someone said that in your place of work, your manager will rebuke you. He will do this to you. He will do that to you. And you will take it kindly. The next day, you will still come to work. But if anyone in the church will say something to you, even ordinarily look at you in a particular way, you say, you know what? I am staying at home. I'm no longer going. Uh, you, can, you won't do that in your place of work. But in the church, you say, oh, well, they don't love me. I'm not going again because we don't pay salary here. But you see, God gives us what is more than salary. Yes. Let us read Psalm 121. <clears throat> For some people, um, the, the very first casualty of their trouble is the church. They don't want to come again. Psalm 121 from verse 1. It says, I will lift up my eyes Amen. unto the hills Amen. from whence cometh my help. Amen. My help cometh from the Lord Amen. which made heaven and earth. Amen. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. Amen. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Amen. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. Amen. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time, from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. So why do you want to run away from such a wonderful God? You see, it is the enemy's strategy. He will keep you away from the people of God. He will prevent you from praying. He will stop you from reading the Bible. I, 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 I love to watch um, um, animal documentary, particularly um, those, those ones um, that prey on other animals, like lion and so on. It doesn't matter how mighty that animal may be. A bu buffalo, they, let them be very many in their company. When lions are chasing them, watch the way they chase. They may start by chasing all of them together, and then they'll be watching for the one that would lag behind. They'll be watching, they'll be watching, or one that is um, 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 uh, at, at the extreme um, end or side, and then they will try to cut that off from the rest of the herd. The rest of the herd. They will cut it off. Once they cut it off from the rest of the herd, the animal will stand up, look right, look left. There is nowhere to run again. The rest of it, they have escaped and then they will get hold of it. That's what the devil wants to do for you. He will separate you from the people of God. Those that could help you, those that could encourage you, the devil will tell you they are your enemies. And then you will begin to see, uh, yeah, it is this person. So anybody that says something then, it is, he is saying it because of you. Anyone that looks in a particular way, it is because of you who is looking that way. Anyone that stands up to contribute in the Sunday school, it is you that that person is using. And the enemy will tell you, now you see yourself. That thing that you confided in this person, look at it. It is now in the open place. Everybody knows about it. Stay at home. Don't be part of them again. That's the enemy. Once he separates you like that, then he's gotten hold of you. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. The word of God is our sword of the spirit. Yes. Jesus Christ overcame the devil by the word. Yes. You remember, every time the devil brought a temptation to the Lord's way, he would say, it is written. Yes. Now, but if you run away from your Bible in the day of your trouble, how are you going to quote even when everything is working fine now, you fail to read your Bible. When troubles come, how are you going to remember the verses to use? It will not come by magic. God is not a magician. God will use what you know to help you in the time of your need. The devil will come. He will twist the scriptures for you. And because you don't even study your Bible anyway... You will say, oh, I think that is true. And then you believe the lie of the devil. In the time of your trouble, let the Bible be your friend. Amen. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 says, men ought always to pray and not to faint. The time of your trouble is the time to pray more. You know, in praying, you don't necessarily need to be shouting and be screaming. You can be breathing prayers to God. 
You can be breathing prayers to God. And because you are not praying to man, nobody needs to hear what you are saying. It is God in heaven that needs to hear. And that every time you breathe that breath, that is deep down, God knows. Yes, my son is calling upon me. My daughter is knocking the door. He, she needs help. He needs help. I will arise for his help. That is the time to pray more. The Bible says that we should bear one another's burden. If you run away from the people of God in the day of your trouble, who is going to share in your burden? You know, when people share in your burden, it will even get lighter. Then you know that you are not alone. I remember when I was in university and I fell ill. And brethren from nowhere just rallied around me. And I was just wondering, a particular brother came and said he wanted to help me to wash my clothes. And the nature of my ailment then was such that I messed up my bed sheet and my clothes and other things, and I was messing them up. I would pack them and keep them aside that when I became um, okay, I was going to do my washing. But this brother came and said he wanted to help me wash my clothes. I said, yes, I've got clothes to wash, but they are not the type that you can wash. I'm keeping them for... He said, actually, that is why he had come. That because those clothes have been messed up, that that is why he needed to help me to wash them. I was shocked. Up to today, I do not know that brother. He just came from nowhere. It must be because by the grace of God, he knew I was a Christian. We must have met. If he wasn't just an angel from heaven, it must be that we had met in fellowship. He had known that by the grace of God, I was a child of God. If during that ailment, I had denied the Bible, I had denied the people of God, that help wouldn't have come my way. Don't give up when your problems come. The battle that we face as Christians is a must-win battle. Amen. It is not a battle that we fight and say, well, I, I, I give up. You can't do that. You can't do that. A, a, one of the songs that our um, choir usually sing is, um, um, Until I lay my sword on the, uh, at the feet of that. I can't remember exactly the wordings of that song. Um, even the solo that, that we heard, um, I love him. Um, more than ever before, I will serve him more than the days of your. I'll be a true soldier. Thank you very much. I will die at my post. That is the motto of a Christian. I will die at my post. I am not moving an inch from here. The time of your trouble is not the time to compromise. That's not the time to begin to lower the standard. And you say, oh, maybe it is because I've taken the standard too high. Who says you have taken it too high? The Bible says ye have not resisted unto blood. So what's giving you that assurance that you have resisted enough? It is time to give up. That is not the time to lower the standard. You find some people out there who have been Christians before but because they now have one problem or the other, they give up the faith. And then they begin to do things like the Bible says that are not, um, are not convenient. Th things that you hear and you say, what? That, that shouldn't be your portion. It is a must win battle. You fight on until victory is won. Because the Bible says that he that endures to the end, it is the same that shall be saved. Even when you get injured, get up. Shape up and fight on. You see soldiers, these soldiers, conventional soldiers, when they go to battle and they are injured, their colleagues don't leave them behind. They pick them up. They go in for treatment. Once they are treated and they are okay, they give them back their gun. They are back in the battlefront. Except they suffer an injury that will not allow them to be able to fight again. But for you as a Christian, there is no injury that should prevent you from fighting on. Let that injury come. You will say, Lord, because you are in this battle with me, I will fight on. Amen. And as you fight on, the Lord will help you. Amen. Run from sin in the time of your trouble. Amen. Not just the time of your trouble, but all the time. Amen. Run from sin. Sin is a killer. Yeah. Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh. He findeth nothing in me. For as long as the enemy can find something in you. You know some people, they may call themselves Christians, and I'm not doubting, but you find that 
they still grapple with some things that the Bible says that if any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. For me, I take that literally. That all the problems I had before I became a Christian that, that came my way as a result of my sin, they must be gone the moment I become a Christian. Everything about me, the friends that I keep, even the shoes that I wear. I am not going to wear a shoe on which they write disco. I am not going to wear a t-shirt where they write I am mad because I am not mad. I am a Christian. I would rather wear one that says I am a child of God because I believe that all things are passed away. Those are things that I will wear those days and I will feel on top of the world. Even though sin had conquered me. But now that I have conquered sin, I must demonstrate to the world that in my, even in my appearance, in the words of my mouth, in the thoughts of my heart, in the friends that I keep, in the places that I go, I am a new creature. Run from sin like a plague. And indeed, sin is a plague. It kills. Once you are able to run away from sin, I tell you, victory is sure. Remember your past victories. That's why we say to people, let there be milestones in your life that you can say, yes, in 2005, I had this problem. I prayed to God. God gave me victory. In 2010, I had this issue. When I prayed to God, God gave me victory. And then you can say, if God did it then, he will do it again. And when you come to the midst of the people of God, you hear testimonies of victory. And you can say, if God did it for Brother Lawrence, he will do it for me. That's why you shouldn't forsake the gathering of the people of God. Some people, it's very easy for them to come to morning service. But evening service is a time to rest at home. Such people, victory is very far from them. It's not a curse. Because when you come to the midst of the people of God, you hear great testimonies that will, that will bring courage. It will swear courage up in your heart and say, if this person, someone that had been unemployed maybe for two, three years, and suddenly they start looking for him, you say, mine is just two months. If God can do it for this one that has been out of employment for two, three months, two, three years, he will do it for me. But if you are staying at home, you want to watch it over the internet. It's, all, it's not all the time that our microphones work very well. Sometimes the thing is cut off. You don't hear it properly. It is not like when you are there. So the Lord will help you. Amen. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Share your testimony. But you can only share a testimony that you have. When you cry unto God, God will give you testimonies. Remember 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. It said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. For them to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Is there anything in your life that is challenging the authority of God? Take it to the Lord this morning and God will give you victory. God bless you and welcome to the altar.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your message this morning. We know this, this battle is not for us, it's but yours. Heavenly Father, tomorrow fight for us. Today fight for us. All the rest of our lives fight for us. Give us every cause to come back and say thank you. Because you have been our God. For we pray in Jesus' name.